In this section, I'll be talking about double slit diffraction and how that causes both constructive and destructive interference. So we're going to need a very nice diagram, a very large and very clear diagram of double slit diffraction so that you can easily see the construct of the places where constructive interference occurs and the places where destructive interference occurs. So let's start again with a, a nice large diagram of double slit diffraction. So here's one slit, it's an opening, and here's the other slit. Here's one slit, one opening, and here's another slit, another opening. The waves are coming toward the slits. These should be straight lines. These are wave fronts. All right, this is called a wave front. It represents the crests of the wave coming toward the slits. So think of it like this, crest. Crest, crest, so there's a whole line of them. Crest, crest, right? Crest, crest, crest. That's what you're seeing here. Now, the wave is going that way, going toward the slits. I'm going to put a little point here. The wave squeezes through the opening and spreads out on the other side. Now, that's a crest and that's a trough. Right, that's a crest and a trough. And again, I'm going to try to draw this very, very clearly so that we can use this diagram to pinpoint the locations of constructive and destructive interference. All right, and here's another crest and another trough. Okay, maybe one more. Got plenty of room here, might as well use it. All right, so that wave spread out on the other side of the, the barrier. Remember, this is a barrier. Here's a barrier. Here's the opening. Here's another opening and a barrier. Remember, diffraction is about waves that spread after passing through a slit or around a barrier. In this case, it's a little bit of both. Now, I'll put a little dot right there, and we have crest and trough. Crest and trough. See how I line up right, right here where this one hits? That's where I start the next crest, and this is where I start the next trough. And the next crest, and the next trough. All right, my spacing isn't perfect, but it's, it's good enough that we'll be able to see the constructive and the destructive interference. All right, now, let's start looking for constructive and destructive interference. Okay? Remember, the solid lines are crests. The dotted lines represent troughs. So right here, we see that a crest meets a crest. Crest meets a crest. So since crest meets crest, this is a point of constructive interference right here. Constructive interference. <coughs> All right, here is a spot here where the dotted, right, the dotted trough meets the trough. The trough from this one meets the trough from that one. This is trough meets trough. Another example of constructive interference. Trough, trough. Now, here's a place here where a crest meets a trough, right here. 
a crest is meeting a trough. They come together right here. So this would be a point of destructive interference. Destructive interference. Now, let's try something else also. I'm going to race a little bit over here so we have some room to do some calculations. Let's count how many wavelengths or half wavelengths the distance is from here, right, from A to here and from B to here. Maybe you'd feel better if I made this A and this B. It doesn't really matter. We'll make this A, we'll make that B. All right. Ready? We're going to count from A to here. We'll call this point X, point Y, and point Z. All right? So from A, I'm going to count the crests. All right? One, two, three, four, five. That's five wavelengths from A to X. Now, what about from B to X? From B to X, there's one, two, three, four, five. That's five wavelengths also from B to X. So the difference between A to X and B to X is zero wavelengths. There is no difference in phase from A to X or from B to X. Let's try this one. This one right here. All right. We have one, two, three, and a half. Three and a half wavelengths. Because when you get to the, from crest to trough would be a half. One, two, three, and a half. Remember, I start on A, and I go to the first solid line, crest, all right? One, two, three, and a half. So in this case, we have 3.5 wavelengths from A to X. What about from B to X? 1, 2, 3. I'm jumping from crest to crest. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Four and a half. What's the difference between three and a half and four and a half? The difference, in other words, if you subtract them, four and a half minus three and a half, you're going to get one wavelength. Well, if the difference between here to here and here to here is one wavelength, those points are in phase. This wave and this wave are in phase because they differ by exactly 360 degrees or one wavelength. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you should go to the section about uh, when are waves in phase. You might want to go back and look at that video if what I'm saying right now doesn't make too much sense. All right, but what I'm saying is that the difference between AX and BX is one wavelength. So they are one wavelength apart. They are in phase. Since they are in phase, this is constructive interference. So we have two ways to tell that it's constructive interference. It's crest, crest. It's five to five, so there's no difference. It's trough, trough. Again, constructive interference, or it's three and a half and four and a half. The difference between them is exactly one wavelength. They are in phase, so this is constructive interference. Now, what about this one? Okay, let's take a look at this one here. What's the difference from A to X and from B to X? What's the difference? From A to X, uh, I'm sorry, A to Z, sorry. One, two, three and a half. So it's three and a half from A to Z. All right, now what about B? From B to Z, it's 
One, two, three. All right, from B to Z. So, what's the difference? A half of a wavelength. Since it's off, since this one is off from this one by a half of a wavelength, those two waves, this one and this one, are 180 degrees out of phase at that point. Since they're out of phase, 180 degrees, or they're off from each other by a half a wavelength, or any multiple, any odd multiple of half wavelengths, this is destructive interference. Just like we said when we looked at it and saw that it was a crest and a trough. Let's pick one more example of destructive interference. How about this one right here? You have a crest and a trough. Let's count. Now, since it's a crest and a trough, that is definitely destructive interference. But now let's count the wavelengths from A to, we'll call this position Q. All right? Let's count the wavelengths from here to here and here to here and see how far apart they are. All right, from B. One, two. Two wavelengths. Two wavelengths from B to Q. How about A to Q? From A. One, two, three, four, and a half four and a half wavelengths from A to Q. What's the difference between them? Two and a half wavelengths is the difference. Now, two and a half wavelengths is an odd number of half wavelengths. That's five half wavelengths because you would have a half plus a half plus a half plus a half, plus a half. That would be, half and a half would be one, half and a half would be two and a half. So the difference between these two is five half wavelengths. Since there is an odd number of half wavelengths differing between this wave at this point and this wave at this point, that is destructive interference. So again, we know that it's destructive because you have a crest and a trough and because the difference is two wavelengths and four and a half wavelengths. The difference is two and a half wavelengths, which is five halves, which is an odd multiple of half wavelengths. Why can it only be an odd multiple? Because what if you had four half wavelengths? What would four half wavelengths give you? Four half wavelengths, an even number of half wavelengths, would be two wavelengths. They would be in phase. All right? So, when you see this double slit diffraction, you also see interference on this other side. Here's the waves, and here's the interference. Here's where these, this wave interferes with that wave over here. You can look at whether it's a trough, trough, crest, crest. That would be constructive interference. If it's a crest, trough, crest, trough, that would be destructive interference. You also want to be able to count the number of wavelengths or half wavelengths from the start of this wave to here and from the start of this wave to here to also be able to see whether this point is a point of constructive or destructive interference. If the difference between the two quantities of wavelengths is a whole number of wavelengths or an even number of half wavelengths, which is a whole number of wavelengths, that interference will be constructive. And it'll be the same answer that you got when you looked at the diagram. If the difference from here to here 
is an odd multiple of half wavelengths, then you will have a case of destructive interference where the waves are 180 degrees apart. I hope you like my diagram and watch any of the videos a second time if there's anything you don't understand. Uh, a lot of people will watch the videos two times or three times taking notes as they go along and making sure that they completely understand all the diagrams, all the calculations, all the definitions. See you in the, see you in the next section.